you know, I want everybody to bust out of the white male patriarchy, but I do understand that for white women, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a safe perch. Um, we don't have everything we want, but we got a little bit and we're worried about risking that. And what you have to realize is if you aren't willing to risk that by advocating for people of color, by advocating better for yourself, you are locking in <laughs> these power systems that block you from having real success. This is our charge. This is what our generation has to do. The women that are in America today, it's not as hard as what the women in America, you know, 100 years ago had to go through. And there's a little risk involved for us and it could be uncomfortable, but we have to do something different. There's a moment now where women do feel it, right? We feel that we deserve something better. And if we don't act on it, it's gonna go away. Progress is not assured. It's dependent on each person understanding. I got a responsibility to do something about it, and I got the power to do something about it. You have a new book out, and it starts with the history of the suffrage movement. What do you think women today can learn from the suffragettes of both Seneca Falls and the early 1900s? When women band together, they can have enormous power. In 1848, a group of women helped put together a convention in Seneca Falls, New York. They wrote a decree that women should have suffrage. They should have the right to vote. It was a radical idea at the time. And at that point, you know, there was not a sense of urgency and the effort sort of petered out. And it took generations of women passing the baton, generations of women believing in themselves, and finally a generation that understood like enough was enough and they were gonna use more aggressive of techniques to force this change to happen. Eventually, they passed the 19th Amendment and it was, an, and it was ratified in August of 1920. I'm gonna paraphrase Alice Walker, like the biggest mistake people make about power is thinking they don't have any. That is what's so inspiring about these women who sat down at their farmhouse kitchen table to demand immediate access to all the rights that men had. And there was nothing other than what was in their gut that told them they deserve that. And today, I think we've just like bumped up against a similar wall in terms of women have really stagnated when you look at um, our overall standing in the country. 75% of Congress is men. Only 7% of the CEOs in Fortune 500 are women. We're still consistently grossly undervalued in terms of men. We have internalized so much as women that is self-defeating that I think we really have to let that go now. We expect to do worse than men. We expect to not get paid as much as them. All day, every day, we are sent signals from the sports that people watch on television to all of our presidents have been men. So, you know, no wonder we have a hard time fighting for ourselves in the workplace. No wonder we think that we might be in competition with other women because we see the people with real power are men and we're not sure that we really belong here. We developed all of these sort of survival mechanisms to make it in a man's world. And now I think those things are holding you back. You know, I think a lot of women can relate to the notion that I want to be the one that just gets the job done and I don't care how much I'm paid so long as I'm respected and valued in the workplace and that's settling for scraps that I think perpetuates these power systems that keep women and for white women need to realize that like when we settle for less than we're worth, we're also blocking out people of color from getting the opportunity to reach their full potential. And this is something you can do. Fight to ensure that none of us are just propping up these systems by accepting less than we are worth. 150 years ago, when the fight started for suffrage, women had no reason to believe that anybody would care what they thought, that they had, they had no power at all. And still they believed in their ability to win this fight. When women realized our success is actually linked to each other succeeding, I think that's when real change happened. I've always tried to be supportive of women in my career, but I did it with misgivings. I thought I might be helping the woman who's gonna replace me. And I no longer have those misgivings because I know that women are not my competition, they are my support system. And when you do not support another woman, ultimately you are contributing to a sense that only a few women can succeed. And I think that women can look to say, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Maria McClintock, and Lucretia Mott. These are women who really believed in their value and they changed the world by changing how they engage in it. And that's what we can do now.